Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I am doing one of my favorite videos to film because I love fall and I have some great fall recommendations for you. So if you're looking for some books that have a spooky vibe to them or a cozy vibe to them, I've got some great books for you. I've got 16 books to share with you today. I usually do a list like this every single year and I try to pick books that aren't on my previous list at all. I just went through the books that I've read within the past year that fit a fall feel. <laughs> so hopefully these should all be books that I have not mentioned before or very much, at least with a fall recommendations type video. Um, I have a few books here that probably might be familiar to you, but hopefully several of them that are new that maybe you might want to pick up this fall. I know a lot of people are putting up fall recommendations right now. It's kind of on overload on booktube, but a lot of people look to creepy reads, spooky reads, cozy reads for the fall. A lot of people get in the mood to read in the fall. A lot of people get excited about it. So I know I'm, I'm adding to the massive amount of fall recommendations videos, but if you need some more suggestions, then I will do my best to give you some good books to read. So let's go ahead and jump in. This first one I'm going to recommend to you, and I'm going to recommend several middle grades first, then some young adult, and then I'll talk about, I think I have one adult book. So let's go ahead and start with some middle grade. This first one is one you've probably definitely heard of before, but I think it perfectly fits a cozy vibe for fall, and that is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the first book in the Nevermore series. The third book is actually coming out, I believe, in October. So if you have not picked up this series yet, it's the perfect time to do so because you can read the first two books, binge those, and then the third one will be available to you. If you've never heard of this series before, we are following this girl named Morgan Crow here, and she is born on an extremely unlucky day, and because of that, she is considered cursed. Her town that she lives in, everybody literally blames her for everything. Everything is her fault. If they stub their toe, it's Morgan's fault. The bad thing too about this curse is the fact I think she's supposed to die on her, I can't remember which birthday, 11th or 12th birthday. She's destined to die on that birthday and she knows she will. Her family knows she will. It's really uncomfortable and really depressing. And then when it gets to her birthday and she's supposed to die, this man comes to her rescue. His name is Jupiter North. He comes from basically this other magical place and magical world. He swoops in and takes her away to this magical place called Nevermore and she tries to get into this magical school. So if you like magical school tropes as well as just sort of like this someone who's in this sad place a la, Harry a la Harry Potter and is whisked away to a magical world, you will love this. This is so much fun. It's really whimsical, really cozy. I think this is the perfect book to pick up for fall. Next, let's go ahead and talk about another middle grade, and that is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. This one definitely exudes so much fall vibes. Oh my goodness. It takes place during Halloween. It mentions all the crisp fall leaves, the jack-o'-lanterns, the caramel pumpkin, uh, sorry, caramel apples, all those, I say caramel pumpkins, caramel apples, all those kind of things. It's got this very cozy fall vibe. It takes place in this small town near Salem, I believe, and we're following this boy who's named Prosper Redding, and in his family, very far back in the day, one of his descendants made a deal with a demon, and this demon allowed them to be prosperous. <laughs> Problem is though, is that they ended up breaking the contract and now this demon is out to destroy his family. And to the hilarious side, this demon actually possesses Prosper. And so we deal with this demon who's really snarky, he talks very like old style, but he's very like snarky. And he's possessed in this like teenage kid's body and it's really funny, but also really dark. There's witches involved, demons involved. It's really fun. So this is a fantastic, fall read. This is one of a duology, so it's a really quick little series if you want to read that, but this one perfectly fits the fall vibe, so highly recommend that. Um, the next one I'm actually going to pull up on my tablet here. It's one that I don't own physically, but I want to make sure I have a picture up for you all, and it is called Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is another one you may have heard of before. It's a relatively short middle grade book, but it is real spooky. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's about this group of kids who are going on a day trip to a farm. When they get to this farm, some it seems a little spooky there. And then when they decide they're going to go on the bus and return home, the bus isn't turning on. And then this fog sweeps in and things get real creepy real fast. <laughs> 
If you are afraid of scarecrows in any way, this will absolutely terrify you. <laughs> this is about these scarecrows that kind of like hunt these kids and like the kids can get turned into scarecrows and it's really creepy so it's like this crisp fall setting at a farm corn maze type thing creepy scarecrows it is a fantastic read for the fall let me tell you and it legit is creepy like i i was creeped out by the descriptions of these scarecrows <laughs> they were pretty scary on that same vein, this is actually a duology, but they're separate in that you don't have to read the first one first or the that kind of thing. Um, and it's not a continuation story, but we follow the same characters. And that is Dead Voices, also by Catherine Arden. This one actually takes place more in the winter. And the same cast of characters, they go to a ski lodge that's, and they end up getting snowed in there. And when they're at the ski lodge, they find out that it's actually super haunted <laughs> this one also is a very creepy so they end up trapped in the ski lodge they can't get out because they're snowed in they can't travel anywhere it's too dangerous to go out but then it's haunted and these ghosts are malevolent and terrifying and they have to figure out what's going on so if that sounds fun to you this is a great one to kind of like cozy up with a blanket at night fire roaring put on a crackly fireplace asmr thing on youtube cozy up with a blanket and a warm drink and read dead voices this is a really good one as well all right let's jump to, into a um graphic novel this is a middle grade graphic novel that is super interesting to me because it's got this really interesting mix of not only graphic novel but also um like letters and di i think no it's diary entries and it is called thornhill by pam smy it's s-m-y i think that's how it's pronounced and this is a really really cool atmospheric graphic novel the entire thing is in black and white there's a lot of um just sort of it's just black and white images um, I think all of the graphic novel portion, there is no dialogue. It's all just movement and pictures. And in between, we have sections of diary entries. So in this story, we are following this girl who is living next to a old abandoned house. And she starts seeing this like this person or this little girl that's in the garden of the house and also kind of she sees up in some of the windows and she ends up going over there but can't find her and so this old house is haunted and we're reading the diary entries of this ghost girl and just kind of seeing back and forth between this girl in present day who's trying to figure out what's going on and why this house is haunted and also reading this other girl's diary entries and reading about her life so it's a very very quick read it's super chunky looking but it's a very fast read like I said all the graphic novel portions are just pictures it's all in black and white and then has some great diary entries as well and it's it's a great atmospheric read it's perfect for the fall as well it's got that creep factor to it so highly recommend it is a fun one and a heavy one you could probably kill someone with this <laughs> it's a chunker all right this next one, again, I need to pull up an image for. It's one I actually just read, and it's by one of my favorite authors of all time, Mary Downing Hahn, and she just came out with The Puppet's Payback and Other Chilling Tales. So if you haven't heard of Mary Downing Hahn before, she mainly writes middle grade ghost stories. I've got a whole bunch of them up here on my shelf. She is one of my favorite authors from my childhood. I adore her, and she still comes out with stories, usually every single year. This one's a little different, though, because it's a collection of short, scary stories. It was a lot of fun to read. Um, it's like, it's honestly kind of like reading episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark, if you've ever watched that old Nickelodeon show. They're just these really short snippets of creepy stories varying from things from vampires to possessed puppets to ghosts all that kind of stuff it's a lot of fun to read so if you just want some really quick satisfying slightly creepy stories that aren't quite as creepy as a lot of her longer books have been because you can't have a whole lot of development in a story that's super super short because this book itself overall is less than 200 pages. So each story itself is quite short. Um, but some of them are really creepy. Some of them have really interesting concepts. So it's fun to read. This is also a great one to read as well if you have a kid that's just a little bit older. And um, maybe you could read them out loud together around a campfire. That'd be really, really fun. I'm hoping to do that with my daughter someday with this book because it's fun. So that's a really fun one to do if you just want some like quick little snippet stories, especially if you have like kids and you would like to kind of read out loud to them. All right, this is one I'm so excited to tell you about. I just read this one as well. It came out of nowhere and I just picked it up on a whim um, on Book Outlet and I hadn't heard of it before and my goodness, I'm so glad I read it. It is called The Swallow um, by Karis Cotter. 
In this story, we follow this girl here named Polly, and she lives in this house that is full of other kids. Um, her parents are foster parents, and so they have several other kids that they've adopted into the family, and it's just this big, loud house. And Polly is always just being interrupted. She feels like that her parents don't pay attention to her, that she that they're paying attention to all the other kids instead of her. And she loves to read, and she also really loves ghost stories. But she's very, very lonely. She doesn't have any friends, and her really her only thing that she likes to do is read. Next door to her lives this girl and her parents, Rose, and they just moved into the house next door. Rose is an unusual girl. She's very, very quiet. Again, she also doesn't have any friends. She's extremely introverted. She kind of wears all black all the time. Think like kind of like a goth girl type thing, although this story takes place in the 1960s, I believe. And the thing, the most peculiar thing about Rose is that she has the ability to see ghosts, but she hasn't told anybody. She doesn't want people to think she's crazy and then end up in a, in a nut house. So anyways, <laughs> these girls end up meeting each other. We've got Polly who has always wanted to see a ghost. And we have Rose here who is dealing with seeing ghosts all the time. They end up becoming friends and they end up running into this very malevolent spirit who is trapped and angry <laughs> and they have to try to help get this spirit to like calm down and help it pass on. This was a really, really fun story. I loved it. It had a lot of really great twists and turns to it. I also liked the dual perspective. Every single chapter had the perspective of Polly and Rose. Um, whatever was happening in front of them, it would switch back. It would switch back and forth between their characters. So we got to see inside their minds what they were thinking, how they were feeling with every chapter. So I love this story. It's very fast paced. It's so much fun. I cannot believe I haven't heard of it before. I highly recommend. This is a fantastic book for the fall. It's got a creepy graveyard. It's got creepy ghosts. It's it's fantastic. It's so good. So I highly recommend that one as well. Okay, what's next on my list here? All right, that was my last middle grade. Let's move on to some YA. This is one you probably have heard of before, but it has a perfect atmosphere for the fall. Honestly, the pretty much the entire series has perfect atmosphere fall and that is the stocking jack the ripper series by carrie maniscalco in this story we are following this woman here audrey rose and she is living in the late 1800s in london and she is interested in studying forensics which is not the type of career path most women not only are interested in but are really allowed to take it's considered more of a male career path and so she is wanting to become a forensics expert. Her uncle is a forensics expert and she's learning from him. She's dissecting bodies, all that kind of fun stuff. I mean, literally the first chapter, you're immediately jumping into a dissecting body. So it's good times. It's creepy. Um, as you can guess from the title, this takes place during the Jack the Ripper murders and her uncle actually becomes involved with the police and having to help try to solve the murders of Jack the Ripper. And because of he's involved, Audrey Rose is involved as well. She's assisting him in the case. So this is a Jack the Ripper murder mystery and it's perfectly perfectly written for the fall to me. It's got a fantastic atmosphere. It's got that like foggy London feel with the Victorian style kind of dresses, but like with scapels and dissecting bodies and murder and mayhem and it's great. So I can't say I like loved, loved, loved the story, but the atmosphere to me was so peak. It was so good. And there's three other books after this too. There's Hunting Prince Dracula after this one, which also is perfect for the fall. So this is a really fun like murder mystery series to try out for the fall. You may have heard of that one before. This next one is one I honestly have rarely heard anyone talk about and is a really, really fantastic multimedia terrifying experience <laughs> and it is called The Dead House by Dawn Kurtigic. This one is a really fascinating and creepy read. Like I said, it is multimedia. We have a mix of diary entries as well as interviews. Um, there's also video footage as well, like written down information of video footage. It's There's just so much multimedia stuff in here, but we are following, I can't remember the character's names. I'm sorry, I haven't read it in a while. We're following this girl here and she ended up being involved in a fire at her boarding school that killed I think three people and there's this whole mystery about who caused this fire and people think it was her 
in a way. See, this character here, she actually has an issue with a split personality. She has two different people that basically live inside one body, her and her sister. The thing is, though, that they never occupy at the same time. Um, one of the girls from sunrise to sunset is in her body, and from sunset to sunrise, the other sister's in her body. And she is saying that her other sister is the one that caused the fire. And it's, anyways, <laughs> it's an intense experience. It's creepy. It's fun. It's a great mystery. And the multimedia experience made it really, really cool. So I highly recommend this one. This one is one, again, I've rarely heard of, but it was really fun and it's fantastic for the fall. It's got that boarding school setting. It's got this, like, the creepy setting of, like, is this girl real? Is she not? What's happening? So it's a lot of fun. All right, this next one, let's jump into a different vein here. This is another one you've probably heard of as well, but it is legit like the most fall thing I think I've ever read. It's got that perfect crisp fall feeling and it is a graphic novel. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. You have probably heard of this one. It's usually on most, at least recently, fall recommendations list, and it's for good reason. This is a graphic novel. We find these following these two characters here that every single fall they work at this um, pumpkin farm. And it's not just a pumpkin picking patch. There's also a corn maze and lots of different vendors that sell fall type foods and drinks. And there's games and a petting zoo. It's like this whole kind of like fall park, honestly. We have these two characters here who every single fall they work at this fall festival park thing and this is their senior year so this is their last time they're going to end up working together and being here at this fall festival thing and it's their last night working and we're following this boy here who has had a crush on this one girl that works at the park ever since he's worked there. He's worked there for years and years, every single year. And his friend here helps him to try to track her down while they're there <laughs> to uh, to talk to her finally and tell her how he feels about her and to like truly meet her because he's never go never gotten up the courage to talk to her. And of course, while, while that's happening, they're trying to track her down. It seems like every time they get to the place where they think she is, she's, oh, she's gone to this place now. And so they're like going through the whole entire thing. You see all the different events and the different like just fall amazingness and it's great it's so good it's really cute it's really heartwarming and it just has so many fall feels it is so good i need to reread this one this is one i think i really would love to read every year because it's honestly the perfect type of a fall read <laughs> all right our next one here is another one i don't own but i wish i did and it was my one of my first fall uh first five star reads <laughs> of 2020 let me see if I can find the cover here. Here we go. It is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. My goodness, you guys, this book is so good. I love this book so much. So in this story, we're following this girl and her sister and brother. Her parents had passed away and her father was the village grave digger and took care of the cemetery. This job has now moved on to the eldest daughter and she is now the grave digger of this village. The interesting thing, though, about this particular graveyard in this village is that the dead don't always stay buried. <laughs> Some of them end up coming back and walking around, and it's, kind of, it's really creepy. And usually it's not too big of an issue in that they're usually pretty chill, like they're not dangerous. They just kind of like come out. But then some of these like dead dead houses with oh sorry bone houses is what they call them when they come back from the dead start coming out of the woods and those aren't being so friendly they're actually starting to try to hurt people and so this girl decides that she is going to go into the woods and traverse and she see if she can find out where these bone houses are coming from what's going on why are they angry why are they hurting people and trying to see if they can figure it out so this is a mix of like paranormal horror mixed with fantasy as well. There's actually some fey elements to this. So if you want something that's a mix of fantasy but has some paranormal elements to it, so if you want Halloween feels mixed with fantasy feels, this is the one for you. I loved it so much. I didn't find anything wrong with it. I loved the characters. It's one of the few YAs I've read that doesn't really have any angst to it. There is a romance in it, but I think it's so well done. It feels very believable and I loved it. So I highly recommend The Bone Houses. It's, I really need to get it and add it to my collection because it was so fantastic. Okay, this next one, another one that I don't have, but I really, really loved. And I also wanna to add to my collection. I have so many books I need to buy you guys. 
is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This is a retelling of the classic fairy tale, The Twelve Dancing Princesses, but told with a very creepy twist. So we're following this family who lives in this big manor on this island, on a cliff next to the sea. It's always like storming and big crashing waves. It's got such great atmosphere. But what's happening in this family is there are 12 sisters, but they're all kind of dying one by one in horrible ways. And one of the sisters who is, was one originally kind of one of more of the middle sisters is now one of the eldest sisters now because a lot of her sisters before her have now died. And her family is kind of trying to move, move past it. Her father is just like, I'm tired of being in mourning. I'm tired of being in grief all the time and isn't really trying to investigate too much. But this sister we're following, she thinks there's something truly wrong. Like something's going on here. This is not normal. People in the village and the town that they live near think the family's cursed. And she's like, I gotta figure out what's going on. And so she kind of goes on an investigation trying to figure out what's happening to her sisters and is she next? And it's super creepy. There's ghosts and honestly kind of like some demonic stuff in it and it's just got constantly has this dark stormy night setting so i highly recommend this one this is a really great atmospheric read honestly murder mystery and i really enjoyed it a lot it was a blast to read so i highly recommend this one as well that is a fantastic fall read okay let's look at the next one we've got a few more left this is one i read this year that i really really enjoyed a lot and i was able to pick up a copy of and that is now entering adamsville adamsville by francesca zafia i apologize if i pronounced that author's name wrong in this story <laughs> this is a mix of small town with demons demon hunting and also a ghost hunting TV show mixed in there. Let me explain. So we have this small town called Adamsville. And there is an issue in this town where there are these demons that keep um, plaguing the town. And these particular demons, they like to set things on fire. <laughs> and they like to burn houses down. And because of this, over the many, many years, this town has been there. People have died in fires, tragically, and all this kind of stuff. But most people don't realize it's demons except for this one family. And this family, their job that the other town, the rest of the town doesn't know, their job has been trying to protect this town from these demons. And it is falling to this girl that we were following in here. Um, her mother originally, that was her job and her mom disappeared. And now that she, her mom disappeared, she is now hunting down demons. It basically kind of reminds, sorry, reminds me can't talk, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's got that feel to it to me. And we're following this girl who everybody doesn't like her. She, people think she's the one that causes fires, but she's actually the one that's protecting people and trying to stop these demons. And this house, sorry, this house, this town is very, very haunted. And because of that, there is a ghost hunting TV show that comes in to do some episodes and some stuff, stuff ha starts happening. And the girls tried to protect the, the town as well as try to protect the people um, in this ghost hunting crew. And anyways, that's a lot. It's really, this is one that's hard to explain, but it has some really great Halloween vibes to it. Buffy vibes. It was a lot of fun and I really liked it. I liked the main character. She was snarky and totally BA. I really liked her a lot. So it's a really, really fun book. If you like that small town, Buff the Vampire Slayer feel. So it's a good one. All right. I've got three more left, folks. Next is House of Furies by Madeline Rue. This is another one that just took me completely by surprise. In this story, we are following this Irish immigrant who has been going to this boarding school for most of her life, being raised to basically hopefully be a governess for a like upstanding family or something like that. And that's not really what she wants to do. And she ends up running away from this boarding school and she ends up becoming a house caretaker maid for the this boarding house that's uh, I can't remember the name of the house but she ends up going to this boarding house and working there and not long after she starts working there she realizes there's some strange things going on um, things that go bump in the night she finds some ghosts going on there she also is seeing a lot of the guests are dying in horrible ways <laughs> It is really, really creepy, and she ends up finding out, basically, that this house draws people to it who have done terrible things, and people kind of find their comeuppance there. There is a lot of Irish folklore in this. There is a lot of ghosts and demons and creepiness, and I loved this book. I loved the story. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the writing. 
It was really, really fun. I highly recommend the series. It is a trilogy. I am planning on reading the rest of them very, very soon before the end of the year. This was a lot of fun and I was shocked by this book because I was not expecting to love it as much as I did. It was so good. So I highly recommend this one. This one really, really fits well for fall and Halloween. So if you want a little spooky read, go for this one. All right, two more. This next one I'm going to tell you about. I just read, I think this month, um, I've read so many books this month, it feels like it was forever ago that I read it, but it is legitimately, I think, the scariest book I have ever read, ever, straight up. I had a blast reading it, but I will say if it were to be made into a movie, which I think it would make a fantastic movie, but if it were made into a movie, I probably couldn't handle it. That's called The Haunted by Daniel Vega. My goodness. <laughs> And this story, it sounds pretty much like a basic ghost story. We have this girl and her family who have recently moved to this small town where everybody knows everybody. And they moved into a house that her parents are wanting to renovate. And this is ends up being the notorious house in this particular town. It's the house that the kids are afraid to walk across the street with it. Like they're afraid to like walk on the same side of the street of this house. Kids dare each other to go in this house like people have been murdered or there's been suicide there as well. It's just a creepy house. They don't know this before they move in, but they find out after they move in. And it is crazy haunted. And there is a crazy malevolent spirit there. And it gets really creepy real fast. So we're seeing, following this girl who lives in this house, crazy stuff starts going down. She tries to figure out how to stop it. That's basically what the story is about. But my goodness, it's terrifying. <laughs> The, the stuff that happens is just so scary. It is, oh my gosh, it's so scary. <laughs> and I was so excited to find out that the next book, I didn't realize this was going to be a series. The next book in the series just came out in July and I am reading that ASAP because this was terrifying and I want to read more. <laughs> so if you want to be legitimately creeped out and you want some really creepy haunted house stories, go for The Haunted. It's creepy. It will probably terrify you but it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. So if you want some good, creepy scares, do it. All right. Last one, folks. This is the one adult one that I put on here because I thought this is the one that I've read recently that I feel like can fit within sort of like that fall spooky time vibe. And that is Lock Every Door by Riley Sanger. If you haven't heard of this one before, um, it's been around booktube quite a bit lately. But in this one, we are following this girl who's down on her luck. She's just lost her job. She's also just recently broken up with her boyfriend she was living with. And so now she's crashing on her friend's couch and things are looking pretty down until she sees an ad in the newspaper to be an apartment sitter at this particular famous building in New York. It's this high raise building that usually um, very private people, very fancy people, and sometimes celebrities live in this building. It's the kind of building that people dream about living in. So she goes and interviews to be the apartment setter and it sounds like an amazing opportunity. All she has to do is stay in this apartment and she gets paid a thousand dollars a week. Dang, <laughs> that's a lot of money. So she's been being paid to, to stay in this apartment for a thousand dollars a week. There are some rules that she has to follow such as she can't have anyone over. She's not allowed to have anyone over at the apartment. She has to stay in the apartment every single night. She's allowed to come and go if she pleases but she has to stay the night there. And there's some other rules as well that seem a bit strange but the money seems really really good. Once she moves in she ends up meeting a few other people that are also apartment sitting in some other apartments who are being paid the same amount as well. And she ends up getting to know some of them until one of them disappears and they don't know why. And then there's some investigating going on, There's some creepy stuff going on in this apartment building, and then it just gets crazy. So <laughs> if that sounds like something you would like, go for it. It was so good. This is a thriller, and I really enjoyed it a lot. There were so many good twists and turns in it. I loved the kind of the main climax of the story. It was just really, really fun and creepy, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I just actually recently uh, gave my copy to a friend of mine to read because she was in a reading slump and this one got her out of it. Like she was hooked. So if you want to 
you're in a reading slump, this is a good one too. But, all right, I've been talking for about 30 minutes now, so I apologize. I tried to be quick with these, but those are all the books I recommend for fall that I've read within this past year that I think will be perfect for the fall season. Um, I hope that you end up picking up some of these. Let me know down, down below if there's any of these that piqued your interest, or even also if there's any of these that you've read, let me know what you thought about them. On this side of the video over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel, follow me on book journey. On this side of the video over here is a suggestion for another video if you wanna watch another one right now but thank you so much for watching happy fall you rock and don't forget to keep reading <laughs> bye